Today we're going to be carrying out electrolysis on copper sulfate, copper chloride, sodium chloride and sodium sulfate solutions and we're going to be recording our observations and stating what's formed in this table. This is the equipment I'm going to be using. I've got a power pack connected to an electrode. This is going to be the cathode as it's connected to the negative side of the power pack which means this is the anode which is connected to the positive side of the power pack and then we have a light bulb to show us that the circuit is on and working. The first one we're going to do is sodium chloride so I'm going to pour 50 milliliters of sodium chloride into this beaker Then we're going to place the electrodes in and turn the circuit on. So as you can see there are two gases being produced. On the right side we have the anode and on the left side we have the cathode. So we can see those bubbles of gas being produced. Now to confirm that the gas being produced at the anode is chlorine gas. I've got a piece of damp blue litmus paper and I'm going to hold it over the anode and if the gas is chlorine then the damp blue litmus paper should bleach white. And as you can see the end of the litmus paper has turned white, which indicates the presence of chlorine gas. Now I'm going to repeat the same method of sodium sulfate solution, 50 milliliters once again. And I put the electrodes in and turn the circuit on. And you can tell the circuit is on because the light bulb is lighting up. As you can see, once again, we have two gases being produced at the anode on the right and the cathode on the left. I'm going to repeat the method again, this time with copper chloride. Once again, 50 milliliters. Then we're going to put the electrodes in and start the circuit. As you can see, we have a gas being produced at the anode, but no gas being produced at the cathode. So now I'm going to test for the presence of chlorine gas once again. So I'm going to use a piece of damp blue litmus paper and I'm going to trap it between the lid and the beaker. As you can see, the chlorine gas has bleached the damp blue litmus paper and it's turned white. So we confirmed that chlorine gas was produced at the anode. Now at the cathode, if we lift the electrodes out of the solution, you can see that the cathode has turned orange brown. It has been plated with copper. The last solution we're going to do is copper sulfate solution. Once again, 50 milliliters. Put the electrodes in and turn the circuit on. As you can see, there is a gas being produced at an anode and no gas being produced at the cathode. And at the cathode, as we lift the electrodes out of the solution, you can see that once again the colour of the cathode has turned orange brown, indicating that it's been plated with copper. The first one we looked at was sodium chloride, and at the positive electrode we saw bubbles of gas and at the negative electrode the cathode we also saw bubbles of gas. Now we confirmed that at the anode the gas was chlorine using the damp blue litmus paper but what gas would be produced at the negative electrode the cathode? So during the electrolysis of sodium chloride, 
It is an aqueous solution, which means it's dissolved in water. That's why we have the hydroxide ions and the hydrogen ions. Now, the rules for aqueous solutions are at the cathode, hydrogen will form unless there is a metal that is less reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series. And at the anode, oxygen will form unless there is a halide ion, which is a group 7 ion. So we're going to start with the cathode. Now, the sodium, positive sodium ions and the positive hydrogen ions will move towards the cathode. And so at the cathode, hydrogen will form because we don't have a metal that's less reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series. So hydrogen will gain electrons at the cathode to form hydrogen gas. Now we need to balance it. There's two hydrogen atoms on the right, so we need two on the left. And there's two positive charges now, so we need two negative charges. Now at the anode, chloride ions and hydroxide ions will move towards the anode. And oxygen will form unless there is a halide ion, which is a group 7 ion. And chloride is a group 7 halide ion. So the chloride ions will turn into chlorine gas. Okay, we need to balance the equation. So there's two chlorine atoms on the right, which means we need two chloride ions on the left. And we need to add two electrons to the right side to balance the charge. So that's why we have bubbles of hydrogen gas produced at the cathode and bubbles of chlorine gas produced at the anode. The next one we did was the sodium sulfate solution. At the anode, we saw bubbles of gas and at the cathode, we also saw bubbles of gas. So we have these four ions present in the solution. The sodium ion and the hydrogen ion are both positive cations, so they're going to move towards the negative cathode. And the sulfate uh, ion and the hydroxide ion are both going to move towards the positive anode. At the cathode, hydrogen will form unless there is a metal less reactive than hydrogen. So we don't have a metal less reactive than hydrogen, which means once again, hydrogen gas will form. I'm not going to repeat the equation for this one because I've already done it. At the anode, the hydroxide ion that moves towards the anode will form oxygen unless there is a halide ion from group 7, which we don't have. We have a sulfate ion. So the hydroxide is going to give us oxygen and some water. And if we balance that, we have four hydroxide ions will become one molecule of oxygen, two molecules of water, and then we need to add four electrons to this side. So that's why we have bubbles of hydrogen gas at the cathode and bubbles of oxygen gas at the anode. The next one we did was copper chloride and at the cathode we saw it turned orange brown and at the anode we saw bubbles of gas and we confirmed that at the anode the element formed was chlorine from the damp blue litmus paper and the orange brown color indicated copper at the cathode. So these are the four ions present in the copper chloride solution. The copper and the hydrogen cations will move towards the negative cathode and the chloride and hydroxide anions will move towards the positive anode. Now at the cathode, hydrogen will form unless there's a metal less reactive. This time we have a metal less reactive, so that means copper will be formed at the cathode. Now we need to balance the charges, which means we need to add two electrons to this side, which means copper will gain two electrons, copper ions will gain two electrons to form copper atoms. At the anode, uh, oxygen will form unless there is a halide ion from group 7. Once again, we have chlorine present, which means bubbles of chlorine gas will form. And I'm not going to do this half equation again because I've already done it. So that's why we will have metal plated on the cathode and bubbles of chlorine gas at the anode. 
The last one we did was copper sulfate solution at the cathode. Once again, it turned orange brown, which indicated that copper was plated on the cathode. And at the anode, we saw bubbles of gas. So these are the four ions we will have present in the copper sulfate solution. At the cathode, uh, hydrogen will form unless there is a metal that's less reactive. So we have copper once again, which means copper will form at the cathode. And at the anode, oxygen will form unless there is a halide ion from group 7. We don't have a halide ion from group 7, so oxygen will form at the anode. And there we have our completed table of results.